Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, Eastery has a new video. Um, World War II, Second Sino-Japanese War, 1941-45. to Um, I love learning about World War II still. I feel like it was the biggest conflict prior to my journey here on YouTube that I love to learn about. And so I already had a pretty good understanding. One area where I really didn't was what was happening over in the East um, prior to... Uh, besides the more American engagements with the Japanese. So the um, Japanese and the Chinese, um, uh, 1941 to 45, didn't it really go from like 32 to 45 or something like that? I'm not sure. Let's learn. Preemptive like. Original link to the video, top of the description, like always, right below that link to the Discord. Love to have you. Click on it. Send you right over there. If you are not ready to learn, listen, listen, listen. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. It's right there. Home ec is down the hall. You've confused your schedule. Or just sit in the back and chill. That's fine. Let's go. Hope you're all doing well. If not, chin up. China in 1942. Part of the country occupied by the Japanese army. Its economy and military deteriorating. Its very future existence as an independent nation uncertain. Three years later, China is the largest power of East Asia and is recognized as one of the five major world powers. The question is, how did this happen? Well, it was connected to the strategies both China and Japan had adopted in this war. After the initial invasion of China in 1937, the war became a stalemate. Japan did not have enough manpower to continue the expansion and China could not push the Japanese back because of the lack of modern weapons. I have, I, I gotta shut up guys, sorry. Shutting up. Mate. Japan did not have enough manpower to continue the expansion and China could not push the Japanese back because of the lack of modern weapons. But in 1941, Japan went to war with the Western powers and both sides acquired new strategies. China's strategy would be to receive a lot of modern weapons from the Western powers, use them to build up its army, and finally drive the Japanese out of the country. Japan's first goal was to defeat the Western powers. This would free up much of its troops, which could then be used to fully defeat China. Japan began by attacking the Western powers in the Pacific. These included the United States, the Netherlands, and Great Britain. Due to the Western powers being distracted by the ongoing Second World War, the Japanese forces the in the Pacific were much stronger. The French too, right? Yes. By the ongoing Second World War, the Japanese forces in the Pacific were much stronger. The Japanese crippled the American fleet by a surprise attack at Pearl Harbor. Without the strong Allied fleet in the area, the Japanese quickly captured the Allied strongholds of the Philippines and Singapore. After that, they occupied the resource-rich Dutch East Indies, which completed the Allied defeat in the Pacific. Japan also invaded the British colony of Burma. This area was critical to China's strategy because... The uh, Dutch East Indies probably has a lot of rubber, I'm guessing. Maybe some oil as well. Uh, I'm sure they have rubber, which is going to be pretty important. British colony of Burma. This area was critical to China's strategy because here lay the only connection through which the Allies could send supplies to China. China therefore sent its best forces to defend Burma. The Japanese had the advantage and after several battles the Allied forces suffered a defeat and had to abandon Burma. By the middle of 1942, Japan seemed to have finished its goal of defeating the Western powers and made preparations to proceed with the attack on China's capital. But then a wrench was thrown into the Japanese plans. The United States launched a small retaliation raid against Japan. Their bombers took off from an aircraft carrier in the Pacific. After executing the air attack against Japan, these planes headed for safety to the nearest Allied controlled territory in China. Japan was dead set on stopping any further attacks on its home islands. The Japanese army moved into the territories where the Americans had landed to make these areas unsuitable to be used for future air attacks against Japan. Then it withdrew 
In order to neutralize the origin point of the attacks, the Japanese sent their fleet to occupy Midway, the westernmost island of the Hawaiian archipelago. However, the American Navy ambushed the Japanese fleet. As a result, Japan lost most of its largest aircraft carriers. This was the turning point of the war in the Pacific. Didn't it lose all of the aircraft carriers? Maybe one survived? Carriers. Sorry, continue. Aircraft carriers. This was the turning point of the war in the Pacific. Without the Japanese fleet to defend its positions, Japan had to send more and more of its troops to defend against the American counteroffensive in the South Pacific. Guadalcanal. The American forces achieved success and set out to eventually reach and attack the Japanese home islands. In this situation, the Japanese could not launch a major offensive against the Chinese capital, and the smaller attacks they undertook did not cause China much damage. Meanwhile, China continued with carrying out its own strategy. It had been cut off from the land supply route, but it had the Allies established an airlift and began getting some supplies by air. However, it was a very small amount, not enough to equip a large part of its army with Allied supplies. So, China had to modify its strategy. It used a small part of supplies to equip a minor part of its army. But most of the equipment was used in building up the Allied Air Force in China, which could deliver damage to Japan with less supplies than the army. Mm -hmm. I, to I, I, I don't want to hear it. Go ahead if you need to. I, I, didn't, I didn't get that. By air but it had the Allies established an airlift and began getting some supplies by air. However, it was a very small amount, not enough to equip a large part of its army with Allied supplies. So, China had to modify its strategy. It used a small part of supplies to equip a minor part of its army. But most of the equipment was used in building up the Allied Air Force in China, which could deliver damage to Japan with less supplies than the army. Okay. As the war entered the year 1944, the Japanese situation in the Pacific had deteriorated further. So they decided to change their strategy. At first, controlling China was an important objective for Japan. But now, Japan needed to use all of its resources to stop the United States in the Pacific. Therefore, it conceded many areas in North China to the Chinese communists and pulled its garrisons out from these territories. In North China to the United States in the Pacific. Therefore, it conceded many areas in North China to the Chinese communists and pulled its garrisons out from these territories. Japan prepared to launch a major offensive against the Chinese army. But how would the offensive in China help the Japanese in the Pacific? Well, we'll get to that. China's strategy was focused on getting more Allied supplies and for this reason its best units were in Burma and could not defend against the Japanese offensive. The Allied air forces in China could not stop the Japanese land offensive. Meanwhile, the largest part of China's ground forces had not received Allied supplies and was in the weakest shape it had ever been in the war. As the first step, the Japanese cleared the railway heading south. Sometime later, the Japanese extended their defensive perimeter further to neutralize an Allied airfield. The Japanese advance continued south of Wuhan. Their target was the city of Changsha. The Chinese had previously had some success defending the town, but this time the Japanese defeated them with an overwhelming attack on a broad front and captured Changsha. Then they proceeded along the railway towards the next Chinese position at Hengyang. The Japanese had overextended their supply lines and it took them considerable time and casualties to overcome the Chinese defense. The Chinese prepared to make another determined stand at Guilin, but the Japanese were joined by their troops in their enclave in the south, and this led to the defense of Guilin failing. After that, the Chinese resistance collapsed, and the Japanese easily established the connection with their lands in Indochina, and also captured the railway leading to Guangzhou. With that, the Japanese offensive had achieved its goals. That's insane. The distances? That's like the biggest encirclement movements I've, I've ever seen. Japan undertook this offensive to support the Japanese forces operating in the Pacific. They, they literally, they, they encircled like a 100,000 square mile, I, I don't know exactly. That was the biggest encirclement 
、はい、But how could the success in China achieve that? Japan needed to use its merchant fleet to transport the war materials to Japan, then turn them into military equipment and send them to the forces fighting against the United States. But the Americans were sinking a lot of Japanese shipping, which weakened the Japanese ability to resist the American offensive. Part of the sinking was done by the Allied air forces operating from China. As a result of the recent offensive, the Japanese had occupied the air bases in the area and had thus seriously reduced the danger coming from this direction. In order to lessen the danger from the American submarines, the Japanese opened a land route to Southeast Asia, which made this traffic immune from the submarine threat. Despite the success Japan had in China. Yeah, I, I feel like that's such a drawback. <laughs> I feel like it's like, oh, well, we just made a land route. Now we don't have to worry about submarines or anything on the water. But I, I'm assuming that cut that would have, you know, the sea route would have been extremely much, much more fast, right? Immune from the submarine threat. Despite the success Japan had in China, its situation in the Pacific continued to deteriorate. Meanwhile, China continued to carry out its strategy. It needed access to more Allied supplies, and for this reason, it sent its best Allied equipped units to Burma. These forces would attack and clear a route to send the supplies to China overland. The terrain in Burma was jungle, and this offered the Japanese a good prospect for defense. But due to the difficult Japanese situation in the Pacific, they attempted a risky offensive in this region. But it failed and depleted the Japanese forces. The British and the Chinese used the weakening of the Japanese to go on the offensive. It took around a year, but the Chinese were able to occupy the road they needed to transport the supplies to China. China gained access to a large amount of supplies and started equipping a large part of its army with Allied weapons. This was appropriate timing. Guys, I see this on the a lot of artillery、um, units or pieces of artillery. You, you see, like the main barrel, and then this kind of under under barrel. What exactly is that for? You know what I'm talking about? This thing. Much part of its army with Allied weapons. This was appropriate timing, because by the middle of 1945. The Americans were approaching the Japanese home islands, and the Allies were preparing to launch the final offensive to bring about the ultimate downfall of Japan. It consisted of the Chinese attacking from the south, the Soviet Union from the north, and the Americans landing on the Japanese home islands. Faced okay, I have one big question, and then one thing to clarify. I, I will remember for the end. Well, I'll get the question. My, my question is, why weren't the Japanese targeting? It was it Vladivostok?、Uh, why weren't they targeting the、uh, Russians, Russian territory? I mean, my first guess is that they don't want to add another enemy to quickly come and attack them. But I know this is 1945. I'm talking about 40 years prior to this, but there was 40, 50 years or whatever where you know Port the Japanese and the Rus the Russo Japanese war. So it's not like they they can be great friends. And、um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about that. And I want to go back at the end to see exactly why the the, the Japanese ceded some territory in、uh, northeast China to the communists. I, I got to go back for that. With this state and the Americans landing on the Japanese home islands, faced with this danger, Japan decided to abandon southern China and prepared for the worst. By mid 1945, China had a sizable force equipped with Allied weapons. And it could finally begin driving Japan out of China. The Japanese attacked an Allied airbase. The Chinese deployed their new forces and successfully defeated the Japanese attack. Then the Japanese began carrying out their withdrawal from southern China. The Chinese forces now moved in to inflict a major defeat on the Japanese by capturing the important port of Guangzhou. But they were not to carry it out. Because the Chinese operations had been overshadowed by that of the other allies, more than a million Soviet soldiers had invaded the Japanese positions in northern China, and the Japanese forces were unable to stop the Red Army. Even more dangerous for Japan were the two million American soldiers getting ready to land on Japan proper. As part of the preparations for the landings, 
the Americans dropped two atomic bombs on Japan with unprecedented destructive ability. Faced with these odds, Japan decided to end further resistance and surrendered unconditionally to the Allies. I have one more question here. I learned that by far most of the Japanese protections on the coast were, were on the southern end and the southwestern end. And so I'm wondering if the invasions would have been better to go around Japan, fight through any resistance, and then land on the other side. It, it, isn't that the Sea of Japan over here? And obviously, they're, they're obviously brilliant minds working on the invasion. Uh, must have had an answer to that, why why that wasn't feasible, but I just wonder what the reason was. Japan decided to Probably because it just wasn't feasible to... Too dangerous to move all the ships through, and you wanted more of a surprise landing, and you wouldn't really be able to get that if, if you went around. Maybe that's the reason. To end further resistance and surrendered unconditionally to the Allies, ending both the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Second World War. As part of the surrender, the Japanese forces left China and Japan also returned the areas it had captured from China in the earlier wars. The United Nations Security Council was established to help maintain peace in the post-war world. The United States, Soviet Union, Great Britain and France became the Council's permanent members. In order for it to take care of East Asian affairs, the fifth place was given to China. However, this new high status would not determine China's future. Its future would be instead shaped by the divided nature of its government. The nationalist government was opposed by the Chinese communists who had taken control over much of the territory behind the Japanese lines. Their differences would soon prove to be irreconcilable and would have to be settled in a new war, a civil war between the two Chinese factions. Kind of like the whites and the reds in Russia, right? But that the, the... is a story for another time. I salute all the brave and valiant patrons who have stood by our side and made it possible to get through these long winter nights. Harambe. And though in this video we saw the end of World War II, we must remember, on our channel the war never ends. And our patrons will always be the beacons of hope at the end of the tunnel, keeping us fighting the good fight. The so thank you, ball. my dearest patrons. Great video. I, I just want to go back. Awesome video, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Learned a lot. If you can answer any of my questions, that'd be great. I'm just, why did they... The ...objective for Japanese states in the communists, therefore needed to use all of its... Re why, why did the Japanese give parts to the communists? It's an important objective for Japan, but now Japan needed to use all of its resources and decided to change their strategy. At first, controlling China was an important objective for Japan, but now Japan needed to use all of its resources to stop the United States in the Pacific. Therefore, it conceded many areas in North China to the Chinese communists and pulled its garrisons out from these territories. Japan... Why wouldn't they fear the Chinese communists would try to attack them? I, I... ...prepared to launch a major offensive against the Chinese army. Okay. Awesome video, like always, from Eastery. Check them out. See you guys next time.